everyone, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Dave Thomas, also known as 7 Shot 9 You can find all of my social networking details in the description below. Um, today's video is a special one because it's an f -sharp advent video. Um, all through December, there's a special f -sharp advent going on, so everybody's doing, well not everybody, but um, <laughs> a lot of people are doing um, blog posts, but I'm doing um, a YouTube video um, for my channel. And mine's going to be all about Fable. Now Fable is a tool that allows you to write JavaScript by using f -sharp because nobody wants to be using um, JavaScript itself. This post is going to be sort of like a, a reboot also of my um, emulator programming. What I'm going to do is introduce a very small fragment of emulator programming, but instead of doing it in the normal fashion, previously I was using a desktop command line to, to program an emulator. But this time I'm going to be using Fable um, because it's I thought it'd be really nice to have an example of stepping through a CPU emulator in a web browser. So this is what this video is going to be all about. Now, I'll probably have to break it down into several dozen episodes, I don't know. Um, I'm not promising a series as such, but I'd like to come back to the emulator at various times to showcase different um, different elements of F Sharp and maybe other languages too. I mentioned that in the in the initial reboot video, I think that emulators or, or programming an emulator is a really good test for a language. You can test a lot of different fragments of the language from things like domain modeling right through to threading or um, bit manipulation and things like that. But what I'm going to do with this video is take you through starting a Fable project, describing very simply the domain of a, a processor unit and, and then getting Fable to show that representation on the screen using um, Fable Elmish, which is the Fable version of the Elm architecture. I'll leave a, a couple of links in the description for various descriptions of the Elm architecture for, for those of you who are not familiar with that. So I think it is time for a cup of tea and then we'll start on this. First thing we're going to do is clone the Fable samples repo. So we'll do that here and call it 6502 Fable. Now we're going to move into that directory and we're going to have a look inside and we're going to get rid of the Fulmer example because it's, it's blank anyway. The next step is I'm going to move the minimal sample from its subfolder back into the root just because we don't need that extra folder. And now just get rid of that blank directory. Next, we're going to start up the development server after we've installed npm. So we'll, we'll start up the Webpack dev server now. Now, if we look at the web browser, we can see the sample works. So here we are in the application code. I've opened this with VS Code. You can see there we've got the, the model and we've got our messages that we're sending through the system. We've got our update function, which is processing the increment and decrement messages, which is just increasing the model's um, integer by one. Finally, we have the, the view, which draws, which renders the, the, the graphics on the screen, the plus and minus. And finally, we've got the, the code which starts up the application. Let's just make a quick change by adding two to the model instead and make sure everything's working. So you can see there, whenever we click plus, it goes up by two rather than one, and down still goes down by one. In this demo, we're going to be starting to emulate a 6502 processor, which was used in many of the 8-bit systems from the VIC-20, the Atari 800, the Atari Lynx, Commodore 64. It's going to be fairly easy to model because it is an accumulator register, an index X, index Y, stack pointer, a program counter, and status register. The first thing we're going to do is define the messages that we want to use in this emulator. For now, we're just going to model um, a reset and an increment program counter. Now we're going to define a record which describes the processor. So there's going to be an accumulator, X, Y registers, program counter, stack pointer, and the status register. 
I'm going to define a few extra members that actually extract the, the bits from the status register to represent Boolean flags that we can consume in the application. C is the carry bit, Z is for zero, I is interrupt handling, D is binary code to decimal, B is breakpoint, V is overflow, and N is negative. So now let's write the init function, which essentially just initializes all the fields in the record to zero. Now I'm going to update the update function so that when you press um, reset, the CPU is reset. And the increment PC message uses the record update syntax to increment the program counter by one. So now I'm going to write a simple header function where it's going to use Twitter bootstrap and we're going to declare various navbar header elements and buttons. Now this is quite a large block of code. I'm going to point out the, the button functions. So you can see that that button is for step, which is going to increment the pro uh, the program counter by dispatching increment PC to the dispatch function which we've passed in. Then this button is the reset button which again is going to use the dispatch function to send the reset message. Now if you're thinking how do I remember all of those different nodes and functions and things you don't have to you can use um, HTML to Elmish which is very similar to um, HTML to Elm. So in the left-hand pane, in this utility, you can actually enter some HTML and it will convert it to the actual F-sharp elements to use in Elmish. So the view is the same thing again. It's gonna be a body, but we're gonna reuse the, the header that we prepared above, giving it the dispatch function, which is passed into view. And basically this is just a series of table and, and draw elements. So when we run it now, you can see that we've got the CPU register and flags in a table, but it's kind of the wrong style. So what we need to do is go into the HTML file and add the bootstrap style sheet so that will look like it's supposed to. If we save that and go back to the browser, you can see that everything's updated and the style is correct now. So now let's go back in the view and I want to write a couple of functions to write the nodes in the table. So let's do one for the CPU element, TD and div. This will actually replace this element here. We'll just call the function for, for every element that we want to use. And this one here is the, this is the header. So we'll actually write a function now to create the header as well. It's just going to be the title of the column and we'll get both of those in the code now. So this is the header one. And we'll also add in the rows too. So while I'm here, I'm gonna paste in the rest of the columns in too. You can see there's A, X, Y, P, C, S, P, and then there's all the bit fields that we created too. Let's go back to the browser now and you can see all of the, the data is now present. Now I'll add in the rest of the headers too. So they match the, the column data below. We can see now on the browser, we've now got all the labels for the headers. We can actually now go ahead and, and see if everything works. So if we click step, you should be able to see that the program counter is incrementing. And I've hit reset and everything resets back to zero. For a quick recap of where this is actually occurring, it's all inside the update function. We've got our messages, which are processed in the update function. Reset, which calls the init function, which initializes the record to zero. And then we've got the increment PC message, which creates a copy of the model by incrementing the current one with the program counter 
with one added to it. So if you've got this far, why not subscribe to the channel? You can also click on the bell notification up above to receive notifications whenever I post new videos. I'd love it if you could absolutely smash that like button. It helps the channel grow. And if you feel so inclined, then why not drop a comment and I will answer any that I get. I love to get comments and I will see you next time.